yo yo what's going on guys it's dude here today we're back with a brand new video this time i'm going to be covering the nissan gtr nismo gt3 car now there's a lot of r35 fanboys out there and for the most part they've been disappointed in gran turismo sport gran turismo 7 and even gran turismo 6 as the gt3 2013 model has been in the game since then and it's generally not been one of these stronger cars especially with maxed out racing in the bop of course the 2013 is dominating right now but i do think this 2018 version of the gtr gt3 is far far better in the maxed out category as well for performance points racing is it definitely handles better and it also feels like it has a slightly better straight line speed potential and today i'll be looking to enhance that with one of my setups now there's a couple strengths with this car i would say the acceleration is definitely decent given the fact that it has a low top speed i think that second third and fourth gear acceleration is something that the gtr has always excelled at and i think in this game it's no different with this 2018 model also this car tends to be very stable in some of the higher speed corners not just very stable but it has adequate cornering as well it's not just an understeering machine it's stable in the sense that you can get the car to rotate and still keep it very very under control i feel like this car is very very good for flowy track the weakness is it can definitely feel awkward in the low speed corners not really on entry but exiting them the turbo leg definitely can throw you for a bit of a loop and it's not one of the better fr cars in this respect whatsoever and also the aforementioned slow top speed this is not going to blow you away down the straights it can accelerate pretty well but then it dies in some of the higher gears so yeah without further ado guys let's get into the set so here we are in the setup of the GTR Nismo 2018, of course the GT3 model, and this is something that you've obviously seen before. It's a very, very simple setup, and it's a formula that really tends to work well on these GT3 cars. Now I do want to say, if you're running on a track like Bathurst or Nürburgring Nordschleife, tracks that have a lot of bumps, undulations, places where you need to attack a lot of curbs or dips in the racetrack, I do recommend moving the natural frequency down a little bit, as well as maybe the front compression ratio on your dampers uh, also softening the roll bars in on those sorts of tracks can be helpful on a lot of cars now the max natural frequency on the gtr is actually softer than a lot of cars a lot of cars go up to 5.0 this one only goes up to 4.0 so it's already pretty soft by default but if you want just that little bit more stability and compliance over bumps you can lower that even more but generally speaking when you're racing on a flat track and you want to get the most lateral grip i find this is the optimal setup to do that into the gearing now now this gearing is definitely optimized for one lap pace however if you are doing a grid start you may want to shorten your first gear and in turn shorten the rest of the gears as well to try to make it so that it's easier to get off the line but i do feel like at least for lapping or a rolling start this will definitely be the best transmission for you it takes advantage of the fact that the gtr has a decently broad power band it definitely has a pretty defined peak but overall it makes somewhat close to peak power for a little while so i try to take a bit of advantage of that but also remember to rev this car out quite a bit now if you're racing on a track with a straightaway that's longer than trial mount then I recommend moving the final gear to the left not too much but maybe a little bit just to accommodate those higher top speeds if you're running in a performance points room where you're running less horsepower than 788 then you're going to want to move the final gear to the right because you're not going to be going as fast this is something that you should always look at with my setups because I'm running these cars to the maximum of their potential with max horsepower where you run in rooms where the horsepower is limited you're going to have to shorten that transmission to accommodate that now tracks that I recommend running this car at include trial mount circuit which is actually where we're going to be testing the car today maybe something like kyoto driving park yamagiwa where you can keep the momentum up as well as any other track that has a lot of high speed cornering and transitioning at high speed i feel like that's where this car shines it's definitely not a straight line beast but i would consider it quite viable for a lot of those higher speed cornering tracks but of course guys without further ado let's get into the lap today of course we're going to be running at our test track trial mount and let's see what it does on the leaderboard so here we are at Trial Mount Circuit in the GTR 2018. Uh, special thanks to Defsun for the Apex Motorsports livery. It looks absolutely fabulous on this particular track. As we cross the line here, we pull on our ghost a little bit. Coming up to turn one, want to rev the car out in fifth gear. Get the car turned in, cut that as much as you possibly can. Try to get back to the left. The car rises a little bit over the dip. Hard on the brakes here, turning in as late as possible. Want to make sure that you late apex that. Get on the gas as soon as you can, using all the racetrack. Got to get back to the left here, set it up. Turn in, get on the curb. Again, get as close to the inside as you dare. Really pulled nicely out of there in that second gear corner. This car can be a little bit tricky in some of the low speed stuff. It likes to wobble around and wiggle around a little bit with that turbo. 
we get a really, really good exit here onto the back straightaway, where again, this car has decent acceleration up until about fourth gear, and then it starts to die a little bit compared to some of the other GR3 cars. This thing does get to a decent top speed, but again, you have to really, really rev it out. Hard on the brakes right after the yellow sign. I'm turning the car in nice and late here. I'm trying to get back to the throttle as soon as possible. We unfortunately missed the apex a bit and lost some time to our ghost. But we could definitely make it up here through the follow-up section. Car is very stable on the brakes. Get the car turned in. Try to make sure that the turbo doesn't kill you here. Get a good exit. Hard on the brakes again. Got to be careful here too. You want to get as far to the inside as possible, but also don't want to overstep the boundaries on the outside. Now, my least favorite part of the track break right at the beginning of that shadow. And we dive in too deep actually on our ghost. And, and this, this is where we end up gaining a lot of time here on our ghost. Get a really nice exit and pull out of that corner really, really quickly. Again, it could be tricky there, but if you get it right, it's actually quite good. And a 142.460. Now on the leaderboard, that may not look super impressive, but I'm telling you guys, most GTR, GT3 cars typically are absolutely trash. And the fact that this car is actually a lot closer to some of the better cars in the category. Of course, on the leaderboard, it may not reflect that because I've tested a lot of the really, really strong cars so far and made tunes for them. But a 142.4 is a very, very respectable lap. And I think those of you who really love the R35 and the culture behind it, it, are going to find great use from using this setup. Of course, if you're running this in performance points rooms, you can crank down the downforce before you start taking off horsepower, and I think that will provide you with more of an advantage. But I do think overall, this setup that I'm sending you guys is also going to be decent for certain tracks in maxed out racing. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this setup. If you do enjoy this setup and or the video, it, I would greatly appreciate if you could leave a like comment as well as subscribe, as this really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm and it helps me get more setups out to you guys of course the whole reason I started making these setup videos is because I wanted to provide people with the information to try to maximize their favorite cars potential I really hope that I'm doing that for you guys today but other than that guys that's it for me I hope you all have a fantastic night and I'm out peace